So what is UV? UV is a projection. UV is a way to unwrap a 3D geometry into a plain figure. For example, I remember when I was little, I like to make paper cubes. So I will take a piece of paper, cut, cut this simple shape and make a cube. Or, well, some people don't go that simple. But it was as easy as just um, assembling that together and then you have suddenly a cube, a little box, and it was great. So in 3D, UV unwrapping is exactly the opposite. We already have our real geometry and we will give it some cuts to then have this plane or this paper on how to later paint, for example, or map something like a texture or... So for this, Blender has a UV image editor. Yes, we're going to use that. There are many ways to unwrap your UV, but let's start with a new one. From the UV, from the mesh settings, just press the plus button next to UV maps to have a new one. And what we see here is just the six faces of this cube are all overlapping one on top of each other because they don't have a special way to be unwrapped. So for this, we're going to give it some cuts. We're going to tell Blender, okay, use this edge as a cut. I'm not going to actually rip the mesh apart. We're just going to tell him, use these vertices. Let's do it in the edge select mode because it's better to select various edges. Going to tell Blender, okay, these edges that go all like a vertical line and then like that. And then at the end, I don't make it go further because I already have one, two, three faces. And then at the bottom, the one that is straight. Perfect. So let's tell Blender that these are seams. Control E and then mark seam. Control E for the edges operation. So everything related to edges is there. Great. Now I have my seams. I have the three faces. I have the three faces that make the bottom and then the faces that make the line. So let's see if it works. Select everything, press U, unwrap. Ta-da! It worked. Awesome. Yeah, it's exactly the same shape. Great. So now let's try to make the other shape, the one that is explained on the other image. It's pretty much the same, but we're going to move this seam I want these three faces together, but the one on top, I want it separate from the sides. So let's try if it works. It works. Awesome. Exactly the same. You have three faces that are together, one on top and two on bottom. Let's try with a human face now. In this case, Blenderella. Human heads are most of the time like cylindrical shapes. So the easiest way to go is, well, it's usually you will put it where you don't see it. But if that doesn't work, then you have to put it somewhere. So you put it either on the neck and in the back of the head. Let's hide these objects first. Select them and press H to hide. If you want to unhide, just Alt H. All right, so now we can see. The seams for this character are in the neck because it's like a cylindrical shape and on the bottom of the head and the forehead. Why? Because this will be usually covered by hair. So if you don't want to tweak the texture there, you don't, you won't, you're going to see this later. It doesn't matter because it's covered by hair anyway and you don't see the back anyways. And as you can see, if you unwrap that, it looks perfect. The geometry is, is perfect, has good eyes, you can tell the shape of this character just from its UV. Have the ears, nice and wrapped. Well, this is a great model by Angela. So that's why it's so good.
What happens if we don't have that cut in the forehead? If we don't have this, we're going to have some parts really stretched. For example, oh, no, let's select only the face with L, face select, there. We're going to have some parts stretched, like the top of the head and the forehead. We don't want that. How do I know if it's stretched? We're going to test it with a UV test grid. Select the size you want, enable UV test, we don't need alpha, and, and there. To see this in the 3D view, we're going to enable the texture solid option on the end panel, on the display sub panel, under the shading option. And everything looks very nice. At the top you see something weird there, but Let's bring back that cut. We're not going to see it anyway. So, Control E, Mark Seam. Now select with face select. So we don't select everything, just the face. With L, now UV. And wrap. Okay, that's better. We have some weird stuff, but that will be covered by hair. So this is an overall good UV. How do I know that? Because the shape of each square in the grid is almost the same all along the head, which that's a good thing. It's not a stretch in any part except a little bit in the nose. We'll have to fix that manually, or you can see it in the next tutorial in part two with the other tools. But overall, it's a really good UV. Now let's try to see how it works in our character. There's not a single way to make UVs. There are many ways. In my character, I know I want to preserve detail in the face overall, and the body should be easy because it's going to be covered by first. And when thinking how to make the UVs for my character, I remembered about this book I read not long time ago called Kai Agnun by Mario Echeverria Valeta. He explains how the Tehuelches, some old Indians in the Patagonia, in Southern Patagonia, made their kishangos. It's like um, mostly to be used like as cloaks. They made it out of baby guanacos fur. Yeah, that's really sad. But in the book he explains how they made it, how they used to cut it, and how they wear it and all. But the most interesting part is how they cut it to preserve most of it. So in the book explains that the seams go in the inner side of their legs at the bottom of the belly and all the way to the neck all around the head but I don't want that actually I, I will split the neck so let's begin by oh let's first enable the cage option in the soft surf modifier so we can see better the edges we're working on So I'm going to mark some seams there with Control e mark seam in the inner side of the legs. Then let's connect them at the center. On the way to the top. Now I'm going to deselect that part. The back I don't want it. I don't need it. The head I'm not going to do it this way. So I'm going to cut it all the way there until the uh, neck. Let's make a cut there. Now it looks okay-ish. It will open to the sides. So let's uh, select this with L in face select mode. Mouse over, L, and then let's see in the UV image editor, Shift F10 if you like the shortcuts, then unwrap. Ah, in the render result now, there. So it opened to the sides, cool. Let's see how it looks with a UV test grid to see if it deforms. And in the 3D view, let's enable texture solid from the end panel in the display sub panel then. With texture solid enabled in the display panel under shading, we can see that 
this is a pretty good uh, UV actually because because the squares are all pretty much the same size along the mesh which is a good thing so since the neck is long and it's like a cylindrical shape I'm just going to cut it on top and then uh, we can open it from the back easier just select that one two three mark seam then face select select that with L and now UV unwrap and as you can see it uses entire UV canvas that's when you unwrap individual parts it uses everything which is good and then you can just grab it and scale and rotate and everything just to put it somewhere else so you don't have overlapping UVs it is important you don't have to have any overlapping UVs otherwise it will look wrong unless you want of course to reuse a part of the, your mesh so now let's try with the head the head was special yeah the head was mostly like an experiment how I, I did it I'm going to first split the problematic parts like the ears for example I don't care about seams in the ears anyway. That and that. What else? Let's. Ah, the mouth, of course. We don't want the mouth right now. So just select the loop, mark a seam. and it's good now let's make a cut in the back like we did with Blenderella remember same way but in the back and here we can use that loop and see how it works unwrap ew okay uh, let's say uh, let's set the UV test grid and Yes, a lot of detail in the back and no detail in the front. It's barely no detail because as you can see the faces in the back are quite big in the UV editor. So they have a lot of room and they have a lot of resolution and the front part, the nose, doesn't have much. So we can actually tweak all this manually but that will be a lot of work so it's better to make the unwrap properly the first time. So. For this, we need to see it properly. So how we're going to do it? In the end panel, the last one, the display one, we're going to change the way UVs are drawn. This is just a personal taste. Yeah, enable smooth for nicer lines. Looks much better. An option that is cool to use is stretched. If you enable this, then the faces will be drawn like in white paint mode. So like from blue to red. But here, blue means that the face is not stretched at all. It has a good amount of polygons and it's, uh, the size in the 3D view is pretty much similar to the size in the, in the UV editor. So that way you can have, you can see how much each face stretches. It is good practice to have it on. So now let's make some cuts on the sides. I want detail there in the nose and since I don't really care about seams in that part because the because actually the shape of the character has a really sharp edge in the nose no worries so let's mark a seam there no Let's go to the inside part of the nose. Not all of it, but only until that pole over there. Then deselect that with C and middle click to deselect. Let's mark a seam and let's see how it works now. If it works. No. No, oh, UV unwrap and nothing happens. Why? because the seams are not connected to anything. They're not connected in between them. So they are just like lines. They don't, they don't mean anything for the unwrap. They are not cutting anything. For that, you need to connect them. So 
Let's try. Edge select, then select that. Control E, mark seams. So now, if we do the same, select L in face select mode, UV unwrap, and then it works. Now we have a lot of detail in the nose, which is what we want. Yeah, and almost no detail in the back, which we don't really care because it's going to be fur anyway. Great, so that way you can see that if you make cuts in parts you know you're going to split, then no worries. And Now let's see if we can give some more resolution there under the mouth by adding a cut. No, that didn't work. Let's try more at the tip. So depending on the character, this will be more like trial and error. If it's a human, you probably know already where to cut. There. Okay, it didn't change much, but it's good enough. You also can add a, a seam in the eyes if you need to. Maybe we don't, it doesn't really bother that much. The ears are pretty much a uh, cylinder, so you can just add a seam on the side, on one of the sides, especially one that we don't see much, add a seam and now select and U unwrap. Let's see how it looks with the test grid. Yeah, good overall, so let's keep it. Select everything with A, then scale with S and move it somewhere else in your UV. What I do usually, I just select the UVs I just made and I put them somewhere else, like outside of the, the canvas even. So then I can spend more time later somewhere there now let's now let's first make all of the UVs since it can be tricky to be working inside there what I did just selected the inner part with L in face select mode because it was limited by a seam on the lips I selected that and then control I to select inverse and then H to hide so that will hide all the vertices I don't need in the rest of the face So now I can work properly. I split the tongue and the palette. And the palette. Uh, let's see how the tongue looks. Ew, ugly. Why? Because it's it's also like a cylinder, but it doesn't have a cut on the side. So let's add it there at the bottom. There. Control E, mark seam. Now let's try to unwrap the tongue. Perfect. It even looks like a tongue. Sort of. <laughs> let's put it somewhere outside of the canvas. And now that we have everything, we can start making the puzzle. So let's select it, move it somewhere. Now we can start working on this puzzle. The game is, it's like a little game, so you don't get bored. The game is try to fit everything inside this square because not only Blender, but pretty much all computer graphic stuff work better when you are given a power of two shape, like in this case, um, like 512, 1024, 2048, etc. If 
for the eyelids I don't need much detail actually so I am going to I have just applied the mirror by the way unwrapped and moved it somewhere else in the canvas now it's good practice to keep all your UVs in one image you can split it of course but it's nice to keep it all in one so for the eyelids for example such a little object you could put them in the same UV and you can do so by trying to fit for example where your eyes is going to be where you have some room some extra room how you can make that easier then the fastest way to do this is to use grease pencil so just hold the D key and draw a line or a circle or whatever in the space where you want to put the eyelids where you have some room left in the other UV remember they don't have to overlap so that way you can use Chris pencil to help you like okay this is where you're going where the eye is going to be Chris pencil is not actually painting in your texture it's just an uh, annotations tool so you can put it there change the color change the alpha the thickness even animate it if you like to and it will be saved with the blend file uh, so if you share it your other people are going to see that So select everything and set that image. So overall our UV is pretty good. We are good to move to the next step to learn some tools to edit this UV and make it better because it's not always good out of the box. And don't worry about those seams, we're going to paint over them.